So we talked a bit about Sansa's shoe falling with Lysa out the moon door, and many have wondered if wind would blow the two objects apart. But a shoe is so very light, it will end up miles from the body. The moon door is high, and there's a lot of wind up there. A good point, but they would have to comb the mountain to find Lysa. I don't think it would end up miles away, but possibly several hundred feet. So how far away could the shoe and Lysa land? Well, as it turns out, one of my best friends is an aerospace engineer. And so I posed this question to him. Of course, we need a few assumptions. Now we have no idea how far down the drop point is from the Erie. The maximum distance would be the gates of the moon itself. Now it's hard to say how far that is. It can't be too far because it was only a half day slow mule ride. For the sake of simplicity, we're gonna say a thousand meters. Now it should be noted that a thousand meter drop is exceptionally long. The longest vertical drop on planet Earth is 1,300 meters. And let's also assume some really strong winds of 60 kilometers an hour. So what does the aerospace engineer say? Well, he says assuming a perfectly sideways wind and a shoe similar to his own, and assuming a high drag coefficient without much streamlining, the shoe would take 87 seconds to land and land about 1,380 meters horizontally away from the drop point. Lysa, on the other hand, would take 34 seconds to land and land 380 meters horizontally away from the drop point. And so the net difference would be one kilometer exactly. So it is possible that the shoe and Lysa were separated by up to 1,000 meters. However, this relies on everything going right. The very high fall, the very fast and constant winds, the bodies being in high resistance. Additionally, a not so horizontal wind would mean that Lysa and the shoe would slam into the cliff face. In fact, that is the most probable outcome. The wind would probably blow Lysa and the shoe back into the cliff face and they would slide down it. The Erie does have some overhang, but it's probably not more than 200 meters. I then had my friend run the simulation again, but this time with the less extreme assumptions. This time, let's assume only a 500 meter drop. Keep in mind, that's still taller than the Empire State Building. And this time, a strong but not extreme 30 kilometers an hour wind. Well, in this situation, Lady Lysa would only land 30 meters away from the drop point, and the shoe would land 210 meters away from the drop point. This is a difference of 180 meters. 180 meters is only maybe three minutes by foot. So what can we conclude from all of this? Well, I initially thought that Nestor Royce would be combing the mountain for Lysa. Because he was combing the mountain, I figured it would be likely that he would run into the shoe. However, even in the most extreme situation, Lysa is not falling very far from the drop point, and this drop point is likely a very well-known location. She is, at most, 380 meters away, or a five-minute walk. So without a big consolidated search, this lowers the chance of finding the shoe. After all, they wouldn't exactly be looking for it. However, if they did decide to do any search, I think they would most likely find the shoe. Fallen objects would likely be where the cliff face meets the ground. After all, a horizontal wind would keep the object parallel to the cliff face, and a non-horizontal wind would send it into the cliff face. It would be unusual for a wind to send an object away from a cliff face, as the cliff is blocking the wind from that direction. Nestor Royce's men would only have to walk 15 minutes along the cliff face to run into the shoe, or three minutes depending upon our assumptions. Or maybe they'd run into the shoe on the way there if they came from that direction. It's hard to say. They might find the shoe, they might not. It all depends on a lot of information we aren't given. And of course, our author is not an engineer. He's a hippie writer. He might think that the shoe would fly for miles, or he might think that Lysa would land right on top of it. The shoe might be a Chekhov's gun, or it might just be nothing. Miranda Royce seemed very interested in Elaine, but maybe she would have been interested in her anyway. I think the shoe will be popping up in the winds of winter, but only time will tell. And that's all for this science update. See you next time.